happen or not happen come to the 6th of October. That's uh, counting down about now 43 hours to go before polling stations open and Kenyans, uh, those who want, go back and uh, get to elect uh, the president and the repeat presidential election. But before we come back and continue this discussion, there's also other things happening away from politics. There's, this, uh, there's that helicopter accident uh, that took place at Lake Nakuru on Saturday morning. The rescue and recovery mission is still continuing. Uh, we now uh, link up with our reporter uh, from Nakuru, Evans Asiba, on phone. Very good morning to you, Evans. We remember yesterday two bodies were retrieved. What is happening this morning at Lake Nakuru? Yeah, good morning to Fred, uh, this is uh, Evans Asiba, coming to you live from uh, Lake Nakuru. Uh, where the, rescue, the, the search mission of uh, the bodies of uh, those who perished during the aircraft on Saturday is ongoing. The, today the mission started at around uh, 6, that, 6 30 in the morning, where the Navy, uh, Navy, Navy officers uh, who are leading the, the, the mission. Also, today you have also seen the uh, Storm Rescue team who joined the Navy and uh, also Red Cross are here and Kenya Disaster, Kenya Disaster Management are also here on the scene trying to, uh, to, trying to get uh, more bodies yesterday. The, the operation were able to come out with the uh, two bodies of uh, all men and uh, maybe just a brief of what is happening here. Is uh, and all the operation is not uh, that open to the media people. No one is able to access anywhere across the lake, and uh, uh, we have tried uh, our best uh, so far. Nothing, no uh, anything is going on well, but uh, no one is uh, able to access any information from uh, the operation from, from the officers. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, yesterday, the board were recovered at the eastern part of this lake uh, where. The, where the, the uh, among the bodies was uh, for the pilot Apollo Maloa and one Anton Kipiegon who was among the bloggers of Jubilee. And so far, we can't have any more details apart from uh, the bodies who were retrieved yesterday during the operation. Back to you, studio in the Bully. Thank you, Evans. Evans are on phone uh, from the shores of uh, Lake Nakuru where the search and rescue mission continues for victims of the five who perished when that helicopter went down into the lake Saturday morning. Uh, so far, uh, the latest update is that uh, at least the bodies of those two who uh, retrieved, the two bodies that were retrieved from the lake yesterday have since been identified, but three more people are still missing. Remember, the search and rescue teams have also managed to uh, recover some parts of uh, the chopper but that operation still continues. Hopefully, uh, it could end by the end of today. 21 divers are involved in the mission, uh, including the KDF. And we'll continue getting updates from the crew as well, even as we look at other political happenings across the country. Remember, the mass demonstrations as called by NASA, the anti IABC demonstrations are supposed to be taking place today. We'll be getting another update from Laura Otieno in a short while from Kisumu, uh, whether or not that has started. A lot of things happening also in court. Quite a number of uh, petitions uh, and cases are filed before the court, some seeking to stop the process on October 26th, some seeking to actually determine what will happen after that in case uh, the crisis persists and who will be in charge. Some of those uh, cases will be determined between today and tomorrow. We do have reports that even today, Ali Swahome, the MP for Kandara, who was on power breakfast this morning, indicated he's also seeking to move to court today to stop uh, the NASA leader, Raila Odinga, from ma making a big announcement uh, come 26th of, uh, uh, of October. I do not know what exactly that announcement will be. We do have members of the NASA coalition here. Uh, Senator uh, Ledamo Lekina from Narok. Uh, we do understand there's a big announcement coming our way. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, because I know you won't tell us, what impact should we expect from that announcement? Very big impact. And I think uh, I would appeal to all Kenyans who respect the rule of law not to vote on the 26th. Okay. I think uh, we'll leave that announcement for the Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Molo Odinga to make that announcement. Because then it will be of no use for me to actually say anything.
Okay. Uh, Bona Kimunya, if at all this big announcement changes things, do you think there's any an an announcement that Bona Raila Odinga could make that could change uh, the status of uh, the election on October 26th? I'm not sure there's anything he'll say he hasn't said, right? Mm -hmm. He's already declared that 26th will be an election, but he, it, according to him, it will be a, refer, uh, a refer, um, to be an opinion poll for the belief. Mm -hmm. So he's accepted that there will actually be an election. But as a matter of semantics, like I said before, he refers to it as a jubilee nomination exercise, uh, although there are other candidates. Um, so that will still go on. So I, I don't believe there is anything substantial he might make. He might want to prove to us about uh, printing of ballot papers in Mombasa Road, on Mombasa Road. Mm -hmm. He might want to... But is it true? Of course not. We saw the, the ballot paper being brought from, from Dubai. <laughs> and Akombe herself, your mall in IBC, no, even traveled to Dubai to witness the okay, printing. Okay. So, so, so basically, uh -huh. basically, I think the, 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 the situation will be. Um, you mentioned about anti IBC uh, demos. Yes, right? but with regard to that announcement, we'll come but, back to the but demos. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure. We are talking about why are we, these guys, <laughs> you know, rioting against the uh, IBC? Because my because understanding is IBC, that still picketing at IBC. Office, IBC, IBC uh, is a referee who has just been stoned every day. Okay. Okay. Right? It's, it's and we are still saying Chabukati is uh, having pressure from GBD and the pressure is being okay. getting from lawsuits, from every, demonstrations, every from uh, his staff being beaten up. Yes. Uh, 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 every, in down. a short while I'll be that getting an update that from, from the courts, from the Milimani law courts, our uh, correspondent every, so there in Kenya. So, so I, I, I think Let's call them what, what they are. Yes. These are anti, regard to this these are anti democracy uh, riots that are continuing. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. But, 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 uh, but sorry, before you left there, I, I, I want to talk about the big moment. announcement. The big announcement that we expect from Rilo. Every Kenyan, Kenyan, no, 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 every Kenyan I'll come back to you. Every Kenyan, whether from Kitipiri or from Rongo, where mm -hmm. I come from, has the inalienable right mm -hmm. to picket on whichever day, including the election day. That's our constitution. These are extraordinary circumstances. Extraordinary, not even envisaged by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Such extraordinary circumstances demand extraordinary leadership and action mm -hmm. from the people involved in the process. Having a bigger you know, this is when a sacrifice has to be taken for the country as opposed to self. It is what Raila and Uhuru particularly must do. Throughout history, all of Should us know... A sacrifice come, uh, all of us know, uh, Freddie, all of us know, for example, that Raila has made sacrifices for this country, sometimes at the expense of his own, mm -hmm. his own, uh, his own uh, desires and his own uh, dreams. Honorable Kimonia was a right-hand man of, the, of, of former President Mwaki Baki. He understands that in 2002, Honorable Raila made this sacrifice for the country, giving the opportunity. Now, it is what Moi did in 1991 when he had to repeal section 2 and not because he loved it but it because the country at that David, time I love to stay in my mind that would take extraordinary I wanted to extraordinary extraordinary comment on this big uh, announcement, announcement mm -hmm. by Raila Odinga you know, there is a name Raila Odinga has earned his name he's himself a name called Agwambo mm -hmm. uh, from my, where he's come from Agwambo means the unpredictable one yeah. you cannot read him uh, they have not been able to read him they will not I cannot either neither can Ledam or Lekina so okay. we don't know so he could even announce but I know it will be something that will further the cost of nationhood but it's for that ambiguity yes, that is creating the Senate economic Ledam. situation we're facing the yeah. honourable yeah. senator the honourable senator pointed out that the mm. constitution comes first yes, yes and if the constitution comes first then we adhere to the rules and regulations therein yes now if we adhere to the rules and regulations therein and I hope that this announcement will not send us into economic or political upheaval. Yes, and uh, the reason why I'm talking about this announcement is that uh, Ali Suahome MP for Kandara has uh, <laughs> indicated she'll be moving to court to try and stop Raila Odinga from uh, making that announcement, whatever it is. <laughs> but now, let's, let's get an update from the courts now. Um, uh, Zuya Walter, a reporter from Milimani Law Courts, very good morning to you, Zuya. Has Ali Suahome filed this uh, uh, suit, uh, this petition? And uh, what other petitions are there? Because we understand quite a number of things are happening with regard uh, to this process uh, for the 26th of October. Zuya? A very good morning to you, Fred. And indeed, I'm here at the Milimani Law Court, and it's going to be a very busy day 
there are a number of uh, uh, petitions that are pending for hearing and determination. I uh, remember that uh, concerning uh, another member of parliament, yes, indeed, he filed a petition yesterday in the evenings against NASA leaders, including Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka. According to the petition, uh, Wahome is seeking orders to restrain NASA from calling and conducting mass action uh, or any protest uh, from today till the uh, polling day. She also wants orders uh, issued restraining Odinga and the party from campaigning beyond the campaign window. And uh, again, another order that uh, the legislator is also uh, seeking is to uh, be restrained from interfering with the peaceful conduct of the fresh presidential election and even from making any statement concerning the Thursday poll. Now, it is a petition that is expected to be heard before High Court Judge Justice Mwita, and I understand that the petition will be heard at around 12, but uh, NASA, NASA, I, I also understand that NASA has, uh, has already uh, gotten a hint of this petition and has uh, sent a lawyer to represent them in this matter. So we are just here waiting to see whether they will oppose to this uh, petition and whether we will have any directions from the court. At the same time, as I told you earlier, that we have so many cases. There is a case that was filed by business mind, businessman and former uh, Kilome member of parliament, that is Harold Mao, who wants the Thursday presidential election seat, be stopped. Now, this is a petition that was to be heard yesterday, but because of time, the judges, the judge, that is Tacha Mita, directed that the parties appear before him, and it is a matter that will be heard together with another matter that has been filed by Udalendo Institute, seeking to have NASA leader Raila Odinga compelled to participate in the Thursday election. At the same time, I understand that there is another matter that has been filed at the Supreme Court this morning by three voters, one voter from Niali, another one from West Branch in Nairobi County, and another one from Mad Madari. I'm yet to get the papers and get to know what they are speaking, but of course it, it is a matter that is touching on the Thursday election. At the same time, there is a judgment that should be delivered today at around 2 p.m. by the High Court, a matter that was filed two weeks ago by a member of parliament for Court South, that is Kosin. Uh, this is a judgment seeking to have um, Raila Odinga compelled to participate in the election. Remember that in this petition, uh, NASA did not send any lawyer to represent them, so NASA did not participate in this, neither did they uh, file their responses in this matter. Then there is another matter that was filed yesterday by a voter uh, from Kisumu who wants Cornell be stopped from threatening members of the public from going uh, uh, from exercising their constitutional rights and this is voting on Thursday so it is also under certificate of urgency and at around 12 the High Court will hear all these matters. Fred? Thank you Zuya, quite a busy day for the courts today. Uh, Zuya Walter there, reporter from Milimani Locos, giving us an update of the fight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At least seven, eight petitions before uh, the courts with regard to the process on October 26th. Uh, of course, Oki okay, Omtata had uh, uh, gone to court seeking a, a clarification on what should happen after uh, October 26th with regard to who takes over. Uh, David Kosin, uh, the MP for uh, Z. Uh, the court south mm -hmm. uh, seeking to compel okay. Raila Odinga to take part uh, in the election. Okay, Tata had mentioned Supreme Court, we do understand three voters have moved to court as well this morning. Mzalendo Institute has also moved to court seeking to have Raila Odinga take part in the election. Harun Mwao has moved to court seeking to have the election of October 26 postponed. And now Alice Wahome, we do understand she has already filed that petition uh, where she has three prayers. One, to have the mass action stopped. Two, to stop Raila Odinga from campaigning and three to have Raila Odinga stopped from making any statements that could affect the October 26th election. <laughs> yes, that petition has already been filed. Mary hadn't said anything yet. I did actually say something, yes. and I will add to it. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. We understand the intentions behind um, the 
Honorable Raila pulling out. However, we are facing an economic crisis. The question now is, can we get over this in the next couple of months? Then the other question we are facing is, these cases are a matter of urgency to the entire nation and the people of Kenya. As a lawyer, Nelson Havi was um, seen outside the courts saying that a lot of these cases may not even get to the judgment process before the 26th. So now we're in limbo. Mm -hmm. The only person who ought to be in court right now, following his statement last week, is the chair of YBC. Chebukati should go to the Supreme Court and because we saw how the Supreme Court operates, they would even hear and determine that case overnight. And tell the Supreme Court, as he alluded to in his speech last week, that listen here, dear Supreme Court, I am the national returning officer. I am the one who in law must ensure that this process has been fair. I am the accounting officer mm -hmm. for this process. I believe that we are standing at a point where this country will be divided after this election. My conscience does not allow me, therefore, to proceed with this election. And on that basis, I request you to allow me to push forward this election. Yes. Because if that is not achieved, then he will have to handle himself as having, you know, as, as Kivuito, for example, did, who may, in his own opinion, have thought that he, he was just doing it for himself. But this is about the country. Mm -hmm. And when it is about the country, it is not about one side of the country. It's about the entire country. But I'm interested also in understanding in, in the determination of the Harun Mao case. Remember, Harun Mao is the reason we had elections in 2013 March as opposed to 2012 December when he went to court. His, his guys seem to have got it together. I'm very interested in, in that ruling because it also addresses fundamental legal issues uh, around the Raila Odinga's withdrawal okay. from the election. Now, and even as we continue this discussion, uh, we, we're getting updates, uh, one from Eldoret, where the IBC is already... Uh, already uh, preparations are underway for the October 26th election. Let's get to this update from John Wanyama, who is at the IBC offices uh, in Eldoret. Yeah. John, what's going on there? A very good morning again in the Mule, and as you've said here in Eldoret, specifically Wasingishu County, the IBC officials are preparing themselves to ensure that this activity for voting on 26th of October happens. And here where I am, I'm at tax centre uh, at the Eldoret town, and uh, as you can see, uh, IBC officials are doing whatever they can to ensure that uh, when the ballot materials arrives here, they go to the specific polling stations. This is the major place where all materials for polling stations, potential polling material papers, will be brought here so that they can be distributed to other uh, sub counties in the entire county. With me is an official, Mr. Uh, uh, IBC official, whom we would like to talk to, to tell us how far they have gone and what are, what are they doing. What, what are you doing here today and how, how prepared are you so far? Uh, thank you very much. My name is Waishinga, uh, the returning officer for my Bend constituency in your signature county. Uh, basically what we are doing, we are just preparing for packaging. We are packaging all the materials. We have received all the materials. The only thing that uh, we have not received at the moment are the ballot papers. And immediately you will get the ballot papers. Uh, we shall, uh, by, by tomorrow evening, we shall have cleared with all the packaging of materials, both the strategic and uh, the non strategic materials. We are also doing the charging of the kims, as you can see there, so that uh, immediately they go to the centers, polling centers, uh, the charges are already up to date, so that we don't have issues uh, with the power going down. So basically we are, we are up to date, and by today evening we shall have cleared all the packaging of materials. Yes. What about the ground, especially those areas that don't have electricity? Maybe do you have backup for those areas? Yes, the kims have backups. Each kim has uh, two uh, backups. Uh, that, that means that if the kim goes down, the power of the kim goes down, the, 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 the power bank will be able to charge the kim. And we basically don't have a problem because even uh, with the agas injections, we don't have any issues with the power uh, going down. So basically, 
uh, we are prepared for the elections on 26. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much in Dumuli and clearly as you hear the official uh, say that uh, they are very ready for this election on 26 and they are really preparing themselves thorough to ensure that there is no even a single mistake that can happen on 26. This area in Dumuli everything is set. Residents are really yearning to go for this election so that they can forget it. As you know the economy is tumbling and everyone is really crying about this. People are harvesting maize, people are harvesting wheat in this region and they don't have a market to sell because of this political heat that is all over in the country. Everyone is yearning that this election come today and go so that Kenyans can go on with their lives. In Demoli. Yes, John, we still do not know what will happen on 26th of October or what will happen the day after. We are waiting just like you, Mbwana and my panelists are very sure. But uh, even... Uh, Let's move to Kisumu now. We do understand the mass demonstrations have kicked off. Uh, people are already marching through the streets of Kisumu. You can see there, those are live pictures from Kisumu town today. Already they've started lighting bonfires. Anti-IEBC demos. Remember the courts last week suspended temporarily that restriction on demonstrations from the central business districts of Kisumu, Nairobi and Mombasa. So today we do expect that they will be able to pass through town and head to the IBC offices in Kisumu as well. We'll also be getting an update from Stephen Leto who has been following NASA campaigns all over the country. Yesterday they were in Kisi. Today they are in Ukambani. Leto will be giving us an update of what is happening today going forward. I do understand Stephen Leto is ready. Very good morning to you, Stephen. What can you tell us about the NASA October no election campaigns today? Well, a uh, very good morning to Fred Indemuli there in studio. We are still in Kisi, where the National Super Alliance concluded its campaign yesterday. Remember them having a final rally, uh, just uh, rallying their supporters on their cause of uh, no, uh, no reforms, no elections, concluding uh, their tour of both Kisi and Nyamira counties uh, yesterday. But uh, today they are pitching tent engulfing the entire Ukambani. And uh, from uh, 10 a.m., the National Super Alliance is having a tripartite uh, of rallies in uh, Machakos County led by Wavinya Ndeiti and uh, another one in Makweni led uh, by Kivuta Kibuana, the governor, and another one in Kitui led by uh, the governor for Kitui Charity Ngilu. But uh, thereafter, the National Super Alliance principals, uh, Raila Odinga, accompanied by other leaders, will be accompanying or will be joining uh, their final rallies in each and every county. For instance, in Machakos County, Raila will join them at their very last rally to be held at the Machakos bus stop and thereafter there will be another rally that has been scheduled for uh, Makindu town where the National Super Alliance principals will again join uh, the both uh, camps that were in Makweni and the camps in, uh, led, by, uh, led by Charity Tingilu in Kitui all coming to their final rally in Makindu but the message has been very clear from the NASA principals that it is already time bad for any other reforms to be conducted at the I be seen barely a day to the repeat presidential election schedule for this Thursday and yesterday Raila Odinga was very categorical saying that uh, the National Super Alliance had given dialogue a chance uh, since uh, the Supreme Court made its ruling uh, saying uh, that uh, you know the IBC should proceed uh, and, um, and prepare a, a, fresh, uh, a fresh election but uh, the NASA uh, side has been calling for reforms from the first day and now NASA says that uh, their demands uh, their irreducible minimums have fallen into deaf ears of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and what they announced is uh, uh, demonstrations kicking off today, tomorrow and even uh, they had even announced that uh, on election day on Thursday there will be countrywide protests uh, 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 in, their, in their NASA strongholds but that is subject again to confirmation uh, 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 tomorrow when NASA leaders will be having a meeting and they will be communicating to their supporters on the way forward on whether indeed they are going to stage demonstrations when polls open because Raila Odinga was categorical saying that already the state has deployed a security to their, uh, to various, uh, to their various strongholds saying that they would not again want their supporters to have a bad clash with the security agencies who should be providing the security during that uh, type of demonstration and so uh, we are seeing today is that demonstrations uh, in several of the national super alliance strongholds for instance where we are in Kisim they have already 
already scheduled to hold their demonstrations in South Mogirango, where the uh, where the, the, the leaders, some of the uh, politicians allied to the Orange Democratic Movement, are supposed or are expected to lead those uh, demonstrations uh, uh, at around midday. Also in the neighboring county of Migori, Homabe, that same thing is happening in Migori. Uh, there will be leaders uh, led by Governor Okoto Bado, Sufian Awiti, uh, the Mbita Member of Parliament, uh, 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 and, and also Women Rep of uh, Homa Bay, Gladys Wanga, will be starting their demonstrations in Mbita. Then they will be crossing over to Homa Bay, and later in the afternoon they will be, ha uh, they will be leading the demonstrations in uh, Migori Town, led by Governor uh, of Court, Zachary Obado. And later on, Freddy, then they will be uh, having a final rally at, uh, uh, in Migori Town. And so those are some of the issues we are trying to keep an eye on here in the in the size of both uh, South Nyanza and the North Nyanza, that is in Kisi and Yamira, to see what transpires today going forward. But as it is, the town remains calm uh, as until that time at around midday when uh, South Magrango will be going into the streets, then we'll be able to know what will be transpiring. But of course, Freddie, we are keeping a close eye on the National Super Alliance campaign trail in the Ukambani region. Remember, since, uh, since the Supreme Court ruling, they have not been uh, really uh, getting their forays into the Ukambani region. But uh, you understand that uh, Waipa party leader and NASA co-principal Kalonzo Musiokam is in his two weeks uh, tour of um, uh, Germany is uh, yet to come back to the country but the NASA's campaign will go on today in his absence but remember he has been addressing the air supporters in the, uh, via mobile in all these rallies. Freddy. Stephen Lato giving us an update of the NASA uh, rallies today in Okambani. Uh, Stephen Lato is speaking from KC County where NASA leaders were campaigning yesterday actually taking their no reform no election agitation uh, to Kisi and today to Kambani. Back in studio, I will continue this discussion about the quite a number of uh, petitions in court, Mwana Kimunya. I think, first of all, in terms of petitions, I'm happy there are so many petitions because Kenyans will be wiser. You know, after all these things, um, I, I'm actually very happy that some people are, are you scared? Are you scared about this uh, major announcement because uh, your colleague Alice Wahome is actually is seeking to stop Raila Odinga from making that announcement? I think the context announcement. in which he's stopping him is that he's still a candidate. He's talking no, about... No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's still a candidate. No, he's not a candidate. No, 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 no what I'm okay. saying, as, as far as we know, he's not signed from 24A. Right? Let me... Okay. okay. Now, first of all, his name might be, be on the ballot tomorrow, on, that, on, 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 on Thursday, right? His name is on the ballot. He's on the ballot. And he actually said himself that if some changes take place, he might reconsider. No, so no. tomorrow he might actually no. reconsider. No. Given the assurance that, that the bigger bigger absolutely the will be. But, 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 uh, but let's forget about that. But what I'm, my, my feeling is obviously that the fact that so many people have gone to court for interpretation of different ways is we will all be wiser after all those pronouncements. So it, it's, it's a good thing. And I wish everyone was going to court instead of going to the street. Including IBC chairman? No, the IBC chairman probably does not need to go to court. I don't know why we are pressuring him to go to court when he is in charge of his house. Fred. Right? <laughs> he made a press statement, said he is having issues. He's not come out to say anything else, so he must have resolved these issues. Uh, and most importantly is that even when he met the international community, and thereafter they made a statement, this is very clear that they have looked at all the changes made and they are happy that even all the demands by NASA have been no, that is not true. That that is that's not what Godek's statement read yesterday and I'm sure you have it. Now, I think the most important thing, and I, we heard some statistics that were thrown here in terms of what happened in Zimbabwe, what happened also. Remember what happened in Kenya? 2007, the economy was growing at 7%. I know it goes, I was in charge of it, right? Then what happened? We had chaos. We had all this new Sumkate. So we plummeted to 2%, right? We have never quite recovered. Now, let's look at what happened on Uber the announcement in Bomas of President Uhuru as the winner. The economy spikes. Went up. You know, in terms of the NSC, the NSC index. From what? When did you leave the No, no, no. Let me. No, 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 I don't know. I give each of yeah. you your, your the, time. It's only right that he explains what at what point, when he exited as minister for finance, it plummeted, but then it came back. Okay. By no. the time the president was getting into government, where was our economy? It wasn't what, that I that no, what I'm saying. Go ahead and finish. I'm giving the statistics on yeah. the date of announcement in uh, after the eighth. Yeah. The economy, the, the NSE, which is an indicator of, of confidence in the yeah. economy, uh, spiked. The date of the invalidation, the NSE crashed, 
Right? I mean, it's a fact. Of course, it is. Now, the date of the withdrawal of um, Raira as a candidate, did anything happen? Nothing. The date of the so economy. Let me ask you to something, which is very The facts are there. Oh, no. The date of the invalidation, no. there was no effect it is, it on the no, This is my time. Let me let me just say this. Yeah, It is very serious. What we are facing in this country right now mm -hmm. is actually very, very serious. And if this economy plunges down, we will blame it on Matiangi, we will blame it on Jubilee. I what Matiangi that. has just done right now, he has declared the 25th a public holiday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing by declaring that, in my own view, I think, I think he's trying to stop... Uh, for moving to the Supreme Court. That's number one. He's also trying to stop the judiciary from performing his tasks. So he's, what he's actually saying, any which way, elections must be held and they must be held. saying he's an attempt to ensure that uh, these Absolutely. matters that I've just listed... The crisis in this country ha is being orchestrated by none other than Fred Matiangi and the Jubilee administration. But I would say that true. because of two things. In, Kis in, in Kisi, Fred Matiangi, who I now term as the first terrorist in this country. That's, that's and I'll say that because statement. this is what he said. I'll quantify it. October 18th, 20, um, I think, uh, no, 2012, I think. The late minister, George Saitoti, gazetted Chinkororo as one of the outlawed or terrorist groups. So when Matiangi goes out there and says that he's Chinkororo number one, where does that put him? I think it should be reading from the script. These are, these are things which are wrong. No, no, no. Okay? These are things which are wrong. No, 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 listen. <laughs> and, and in fact, right now, what we, what we ought to be doing is this. We ought to be bringing this country together. We know there is a crisis. Declaring tomorrow a public holiday is denying the judiciary an opportunity to hear this matter and actually uh, dispensing them through the law. Number one. Number two. No, just give me a chance to finish. I know... Um, my brother here talked about the issue of the economy, and he talked about the ambassador's statement yesterday. I listened to the ambassador's statement, and he blamed both sides. He was actually very neutral. I was very happy. Mm -hmm. But in my view, I think it, it is in their interest to make sure that Kenya is stable. We know as a democracy, there are so many challenges, you know, and this is why you're seeing so many people going to court. But America has got to, to, to defend its interest. It is, it is in the public domain that right before Obama left, the, uh, his administration had given a green light to a 418 million uh, defense contract. That's number one. Number two, it is also in the public domain, or maybe it's hidden, that three days before the election, the Jubilee administration quietly gave this uh, construction giant called are you, are you, are you, are you okay. saying that the statement yesterday by the heads of diplomatic missions to Kenya was not genuine? Is that what no, you're no, saying? No, no. I say it. I commend them because what they are doing is this. They do not take any part. But, but they actually told the two parties. And to be able to sit together to help me with this, we do have that Let's statement, have that clip. Have have that that statement okay. by the, the heads of diplomatic missions if and when we are ready to place a letter. And my know. statement is very clear, and get it very clear. And the I say it because they, because that's where the they, they reached out to both parties and they actually told Uhuru Kenyatta that it is not in international best practices to amend the law during an election process. Which and they told the us the also, Which was fine. okay, and they Which also came to NASA and they told NASA Stop that, intimidating no, 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 what they said, let me use my words, mm -hmm. what they actually said, what I deduced from the statement is they said, fair enough, IBC has made certain changes, okay, we so know that you don't mm -hmm. agree with all the changes because mm -hmm. first of all, IBC has not made them all public. You know, going to Twitter handles and being told we have done this on Twitter, 45 million people are not on Twitter. So actually, it behooves IBC to come out clearly, hold a press conference and say, these are the reducible minimums from, uh, from NASA. This, are, this is what we have been able to do so far. We cannot be able to do this. Actually going back to the statement of Chebukati, Chebukati made it very clear that unless certain things are done, there's no way you can be able to guarantee a free and fair, credible election. We do have that statement by the heads of diplomatic missions. Uh, the statement was read out by Bob Gorek, the U.S. ambassador to Kenya. Let's listen to what they had to say yesterday. We respect. 
We respect the right of NASA candidates Raila Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka to withdraw their candidacies, but we regret their decision. We've been engaged in efforts to find a way that will encourage them to rejoin and continue to hope they will do so in light of the progress made at the IEBC and our shared commitment to the democratic electoral process. Well, like, Imuna, uh, this statement, should we really be listening to uh, the foreign envoys at this time? Uh, remember, we have castigated them uh, from one time to another. I remember even when uh, Rai Lodinga came back from that trip to the UK, President Uru Pinata said, we do not have to listen to those people. We do not have to take what they have to say. But uh, they keep making these statements. Uh, this they made a few hours to the election. They do, they do have to listen to them. Let's put it this way. Kenya is part of the global village. Whatever happens in Kenya affects the rest of the world. We are intertwined. Uh, part of the UN. We're part of the global trading partners. Uh, there are investments by Americans here. There are investments by British here. There are investments by Kenyans in the US. So we are intertwined. And um, I'm, I'm glad they're also uh, sensitive to what is happening here. And um, from the, the bottom line to yesterday's statement was that let us follow the constitution. They urged Kenyans to go to the polls and to support and respect IEBC. Mm -hmm. Right? I think th those were the three takeaways from, from that statement. And, uh, and you can see basically what is happening is um, the international community does not want to be aligned to violence. Just, you, you've just seen the stones and crude weapons you've seen in Kisumu. Okay, um, the moving away from support or aligning themselves to people who want to take Kenya through the violence route to get uh, to, to promote adherence to the constitution, respect for the constitution, because it's only the constitution of this country or indeed of any other country that can create the framework mm -hmm. for engagement we also mentioned, in, something, inside a we also mentioned something about yeah. changing the laws uh, no, uh, which is fine. days to the election which is fine, it's an advisory they made they made it before and I, I believe that's partly the reason President Uhuru has uh, held on I, I, I was certain he will not sign those laws by, two, uh, by, by tomorrow night before, 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 before those laws, we did it as parliament it's not the president who did it. It's us as parliament. Question is, are you certain he did not sign? <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying, we did that as parliament. We are keen to see his reasoning for not signing, which you have to give us in parliament. There are those who argue. And those, those laws, who argue because those laws we did not do it for yes. this occasion. We did those laws because they are good for Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are those who argue yeah. that uh, it is also a card that Jubilee is holding. Mm. That in case because some of those things that uh, are tackled are handled in that bill mm -hmm. include issues of quorum within the IBC commission yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that even if two more commissioners were to resign therefore affecting the quorum of five mm -hmm. then this no, uh, I think no, they the the issue. That. No, they deal with yes. the issue with no. the quorum. Uh, Senator, the quorum is not there anymore. Let, let me quote. Now the let issue, no, no, the, the, the question is, is yeah. the question is, three. Mm. Yeah. that you have half of the Gentlemen, three. gentlemen, yeah. let's have one uh, clear discussion. The question is, mm. is it a card that the uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is using to actually unleash very late mm -hmm. in the day mm -hmm. such that it cannot be challenged in court and ensure that the game, uh, the rules of the game change on October 26th? Remember what Ambassador Godek said, he said those are not best practices. So I believe the government in power right now will not adhere to that. However, they so you believe uh, President Kenyatta will not assent to that bill? Um, I, I it's do a recommendation. Uh, yes. Not, not a prescription. Now, I want to quote a, b a banner a young man was holding on the streets of Kisumu just now. We saw that footage. And I, I may stand corrected. David, if my pronunciation is not good, you'll correct it. Yeah. He said it, it had ongenero. Ongenero. Mm. Mm? Ongenero, which loosely translated means we're not laughing. This is not a laughing matter. You keep stones. This is not a laughing matter. This is a very critical situation that we're facing. And it's very speculative to argue that Chebukati should go to court and that given the fact that tomorrow will be a public holiday, that now it, he has been barred from doing so. We have seen footage of IEBC officials on the ground and packaging voting material. It is all systems go. And we also understand that there is a large constituents of Kenyans who want to 
vote, but there is also this large constituent of Kenyans who don't want to vote. So we are facing a very, very critical situation right now, and we're calling on either side to make some announcement that will create some form of unity in this situation that we're facing. Before we come back to David, uh, let's get an update from Nairobi. Patrick Igunza is in town. Patrick, good morning. Is there anything happening in the Central Business District, Nairobi? much indeed Freddy. No, there is nothing much happening within the city, the CBD. We came here early in the morning but since then it has been just high presence of police officers who are here and especially a significant number of them have been deployed here at the anniversary tower which is no doubt the headquarters of the electoral agency IEBC. But we are being told that there is a chance that perhaps the NASA leaders as well as their supporters might be making their way into the CBD later on in the afternoon. It will be remembered that over the last couple of weeks when NASA has been hosting or staging their protest, they've actually uh, been of the city in the early mornings of those days. But then again, when it reaches around uh, midday to one o'clock, that's when they show up in huge numbers. And and then these demonstrations normally pick up momentum later on in the afternoon. That is perhaps what we might be expecting today if those past demonstrations are an indication to go by. It will be remembered that the NASA principal Raila Odinga alongside other principals and leaders of the NASA coalition have been actually a very vocal indicating that they will not be participating in the much awaited repeat presidential poll but instead they will be staged demonstrations with the biggest or perhaps uh, the most uh, greatest one expected on Thursday. We are also told that uh, the uh, man who was running for Nairobi senatorial position, Edwin Sifuma, just the other day wrote to the Nairobi police boss, Jafet Kome, asking for permission as well as security because they wanted to demonstrate beginning yesterday on Monday all through to Friday, but yesterday I'm told that those particular demonstrations never happened. We wait to see whether today it will be any different. But these demonstrations, if they happen, they will be taking place in the backdrop of a number of significant issues. One of which is the fact that officially the campaign period is over. Because the regulations indicate that each and every political party or coalition ought to stop its campaigns 48 hours to the polls. And we know that uh, that particular time frame or uh, guideline is already lapsed, but we don't know how exactly these uh, NASA leaders as well as their supporters will be staging this. I'm told that in other parts of the country, including Migori and Kisumu, there are signals or indications that uh, people will be taking to the streets. Here in Nairobi, we will be keeping a keen look or a keen eye on various parts of the CBD, especially including the Uhuru Park, where these demonstrations normally happen to see whether they will be actually staging these particular demonstrations. That's it for me now, Fred. Back to you. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick Igunzi there, uh, reporting live from the CBD here in Nairobi. Uh, where nothing much is happening. You can see even a free flow of traffic. Um, NASA demonstrators are expected there. They uh, typically do not go uh, to town very early, but uh, they could still be heading there. Meanwhile, three voters we do understand have moved to the Supreme Court. Uh, seeking to stop IBC from conducting the 26th October repeat poll, citing lack of preparedness and threats to employees of IBC, which they say may prejudice the outcome of the election. That is the latest news that we have. It's part of those who have moved to court. Quite a number of them have moved to court. And there could be many more, including the chairman of the IABC. No, he chairman has not been in the He's already declared. He's already gazetted himself as the, yes, as the returning officer. Yes. So he's prepared. He's gazetted himself as the national returning officer. Uh, he's moved his materials. I think, I think the, the guys who are moving now, the, all these guys, the Open Society uh, gang, 
-hmm. right? The Soros guys who we just want to mess up this country, do a regime change, <laughs> and then call for my I like, action. I like how uh, no, no, no. Kibunya calls them regime change because he knows that in 1963, when Kenyatta was fighting for independence of this country, the West called him an enemy unto death. And no, no, no. But, but then he calls them uh, regime change. But the you people know. who agitated for the constitutional change of this country in 1992, trying to get Section 2A to be repealed, were called enemies of the country no, no, no. and those no, who were pressing the okay. West. But it was my turn to talk. Now yes. listen. Yes. David, with regard to this, with the signing of the election laws, I mean, when Bill, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta is yet to assent to that, uh, we do understand now we still have a few hours to the election. Do you think it's a card you are hoping to use uh, late in the day? First, NASA must write to the Chief Justice to be able to get judges on duty even though it is a national holiday. And that will be granted, I pray. Because uh, the judges have themselves worked even on a Saturday and Sunday when situations be mandatory. Because what uh, uh, Dr. Matiani seems to be doing is to prepare grounds for the president to sign that into law when it cannot therefore be challenged the next day or the day after and then use their tyranny, as they have said in IBC, to try and push declaration of results and use those sets of laws to declare and, and get the, the process going on. Now, tyranny loses at some point. Sadly, it loses at great human cost. The nature of conflict is that it's constantly evolving. And the front lines change from time to time. What we are handling today may not necessarily be what we are handling in two months. It may be bigger and un, you know, irredeemable. Mm -hmm. You see, Thursday may mark the beginning of a very bad time for this country when it should be a time of sanity. For the simple reason that history ought to teach us about the future. In 1980, when Section 2A was being put into the Constitution in 1980, it was done in a record 45 minutes. No one cared. They did it with that recklessly, you know? And that reckless abandon would yield, sadly, to a possible coup that was that failed. In 1988, the rigged elections and that agitation thereafter in 1992 would lead to the Molo killings and everything else. And in 2008, the same problem. Electoral times in every country are sacred moments of reflection. It should be a time for the entire country. And that is why I called on the president, Uhuru Kenyatta. And his right or left hand man, uh, Honorable Amos Kimunya, is here. Honorable Kimunya knows that extraordinary times, as I was saying earlier, call for extraordinary measures. Call for extraordinary leadership and action. Yes. That if sacrifices have been made before, it is Honorable Kimunya made a sacrifice, not because he had been uh, called guilty. Yes. He wasn't. He said, if this is it, even though I said I will not resign, let me go. Because it was an extraordinary action needed at an extraordinary time. Honorable uh, Uhuru Kenyatta must reflect in that moment of introspection on his own without the deputy president without his advisors without his cheerleaders like honorable alice or homie who don't even know why they're going to court and yet she's a learned lawyer must sit within himself and ask the simple question is it about me and securing power or is it about the nation and moving it forward yes and uh, i finally i, I finally just got my um, hand on that thing like gazette notice uh, I, this is important for yeah. our viewers yeah. uh, i finally have a copy of that gazette notice uh, of 24th October, which is today, okay. uh, the Public Holidays Act. It is notified for general information of the public that the acting CS for Interior and the powers conferred on him declares that Wednesday, 25th of October 2017, is a public holiday. Tomorrow is a public holiday. But I'm reading continue, directly continue from the, the Gazette. Just continue the last line. Yes, uh, to to Kenyans, all Kenyans the opportunity to participate in the exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we have never done. <laughs> <before>. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing so, this. So the, the most we important have never thing. The most before. important thing is this election is very critical. Right? And, and Kenyans, a, a Kenyans have trouble. When, when, when we have never had a holiday, holiday, holiday on the 26th and gentlemen, gentlemen, no, no. gentlemen no, no. when yes. has it been necessary to have a holiday before the election? Never. No, no, no. Never. never happened. These are extraordinary times, <laughs> as David has said. Yeah. <laughs> Kenyans <laughs> need to be given opportunity to First travel. Of all, let me and to travel, especially in, a, in, in the face of all these destructions and people, you know, blocking roads and all that, people need to be given time to travel. Kids are closing uh, schools, they need to be uh, given time to, to travel and people 
uh, have to go all the way to Kisumu to vote. People will have to go all the way to Fukana to vote from Nairobi, from where they were working, from Mombasa. So it's let's not read mystery. Previously, no, can I, I, people are friends. Let, 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 let me let me just let me let me let me let me let this myth. Let me debunk this myth that's being perpetuated here that the public holiday tomorrow is to avoid people going to court to challenge the laws. 26th is the election day. Our constitution is very clear. There are seven days after the election to challenge the election, including challenging those laws. <laughs> we will not have a public holiday for seven days. So if we don't have to close the door for challenge tomorrow, <laughs> well, because people have a choice. Here's my take. After 27, you can actually go to court mm -hmm. to challenge the laws. All right. Right. Here's my take. So, okay. so, so there's, actually, actually, there's no mystery. In this era of fake yeah. news, yeah? Yeah. I'm a little bit cautious. And I know I've seen the... Um, What's Macaulay? Mm -hmm. the, the, the Gazette notice. Yeah. But I, I think right now, maybe, I, I tend to believe two things. That maybe even that Gazette notice was leaked prematurely. Because I've paid a, a closer look at the Gazette notice, and he has no signature. So I'm not sure whether he's Did supposed you? to sign. So, uh, so he doesn't notice. So, name, uh, but yeah. I think it's actually now, mm -hmm. because of where we are, with all these fake news and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I think it's important for... I've actually minister. received a confirmation from one of our editors that it is. It's, uh, it's genuine. genuine. That it is genuine. Okay. Yes. That's, that's uh, you know, that aside. I could have told you. Number two, I have just been told, and I want to correct Mary and my good brother here, that the sign in... Kisumu actually said no election. He didn't say we are not laughing. I think the way it was said, no, I didn't send was, a, a message. There was actually yeah, one it that actually said, said no election. There was only um, one. There was only one. There was only one. There was only one. Yes, we have an expert here. Um, but then, but then wh what I'm actually trying to say now is that public holiday or no public holiday, we need to speak to Kenyans, and I'm appealing to all Kenyans for us to put our country first. We have a crisis because we cannot allow either foreigners or a certain group of people to, to drive this country the direction they want. Mm -hmm. The challenge now remains on us leaders, particularly myself and Honorable Kimunya, who have been elected by people mm -hmm. to serve their interests. In my position as a senator of Narrow County, I'm appealing to the people of Narrow County not to vote for two reasons. We are divided. If we proceed with these votes on the 28th, we will be 2026 20, would be more divided than before. I'm also appealing to Jebukati to maybe rush to the Supreme Court today because he cannot rush tomorrow to be able to ask for um, for more time and actually call off this election. The other thing that I wanted to weigh in on on the issue as to why the president is holding the the bill on his desk and he hasn't signed it. I think the president could be looking at two different things. One, he could be saying he could actually finally be coming up to. You know, the reality that this is not the right thing to do. There's a lot of opposition to this. That's number one. Number two, and if he does come to that conclusion, mm -hmm. I, I think that he will end up having, writing a memo and sending it. But if he does not sign it tomorrow, and he does not send it back to Parliament, then we are still in that crisis because it becomes law automatically. Okay. Well, well, this issue of the public holiday on Wednesday, do you think it will affect the NASA demonstrations in any way? Because no, now absolutely be not. We are be, it's like we've been on holiday throughout. You know, we've been, we've been talking. We've been talking about these issues, national issues that needs to be resolved. We we'll say no, no reforms, no elections. But, uh, but I think, and that's uh, where we stand. We don't I mean, let me just say something here. That there's a lot of talking about that the president should uh, do something, the president should yield. Why are we not talking of Raila doing something? Raila has yielded enough. Has he done anything? He's yielded enough. He has refused to dialogue. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. 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 We're going to take a break, and we call the break. I only want to hear Mary. Because the issue is, <laughs> we are, we are pushing, we are pushing uh, the president Uhuru that he should give in, he should resign to pave way for yes. Kiyatika Gami. That's my call. We are not pushing Raila to go back on the ballot. And all we know is that all these things about telling Chebukati to go to court is just to give NASA more time for Robo Kalonzo Musioka to fundraise more out there to bring some money for Are you election. sure he's fundraising so now, out there? Now, now, there now, now, there now, now, now the time honest. for Chebukati to go back to court. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a very short window. We are going to on a break it's a very before. short window. If he does run one more day, now you're only yesterday. If he does run to court, we'll be very surprised given the fact that we are seeing everything running as it should. We've been receiving WhatsApp messages that have been telling us the process and how the process will work. So I do not see, in my personal opinion, 
Tim Bukati running to court at this late stage. Mm -hmm. However, given the fact that tomorrow is now officially a public holiday, okay, this trouble. is going to affect our economy again because we are seeing so many days being taken up by this issue and we want to see it resolved. Children are going into their exam season, schools have been forced to close early. This is not a situation that we want to see continuing. Yes. Wow. We have even as we, go, even as we go on a break, we'll leave you with pictures from Kisumu. The demonstrations are on. Those are live pictures from Kisumu there. Let's meet uh, and on the other end of this break. And the story is